folks. Um, well, welcome again to the Welcome Watkin Farmers Co-op CHS Northwest Room. They sponsor this room. People's Bank is one of our sponsors. And this is something we've tried to do every year to try to give you a little idea of um, what's going on in buyers and in, in the market, frankly, I guess is what in frozen and fresh blueberries and raspberries. And every year we try to uh, find people who love to talk about that. And uh, Ellen and we I are not successful. And we are never successful. But we do find some people who are eventually willing because they owe us for something, I guess, that are willing to do it. Billy Townsend said he would not do it. And when he turned me down, I called his dad. I gave the. <laughs> I, I had his dad talk to him and make him get up there. So I really appreciate Billy Townsend coming up here. So, yeah. yeah. This is, <laughs> and Brad and Diane have done it now for several years, and both every year they tell me it's their last year. They're so, yeah, they're older. But they're older and wise. They tell me it's their last year, and then they come back again the next year. For, so, <laughs> yeah. Watch you introduce Billy. Let him get started. So, well, <laughs> I believe Billy uh, is with uh, Townsend Fruit, based out of uh, Fairview. What's that? Fairview. Fairview. I, I was to say Portland, but Fair, Fairview, and they are, I believe, the largest single buyer of blueberries in the state of Washington. So even though they're based in Oregon, they're they're a, a big operation. Uh, they do fresh and frozen. Um, and they're, uh, they're, one thing we like about them is they always pay their assessments, they're, pay early, pay well. So I appreciate that. And are growers. Yeah. And they, well, I don't know. I haven't heard any complaints, but, uh, I will say one thing I am, uh, uh there are two, two personal heartburns I have is what Sakuma brothers have to go through with some of their, some of the idiots out of Bellingham and what Townsend had to go through with their food safety issue. Uh, Townsend, I think, got got through that through uh, hard work and uh, no fault on their part. I hope Sakuma's come through uh, their issue. So, do you want to introduce your other two? Or? All right. So, I'm not sure they need much introduction. I think everyone knows Diane no, Klatt with Pacific no. Coast and Brad Raider with Raider Farm. So. All right. How are we starting this off? Let him talk rather than us. All right. So, Billy, uh, we'd like to hear what the 2015 season was like for you for marketing. Let me ask you, how much raspberries do you do? I know, I know about your blueberry world, but how much raspberries do you guys do? Do we grow, do we grow or do we pack? I'm talking about, like, marketing. I mean, uh, you, how about, you said you were – Between fresh and process, probably about three, three and a half million pounds. Okay, so you're the biggest handler of raspberries in Oregon? Probably one of the last, yeah, too. Okay, <laughs> so can you talk about a little bit about your 2015 marketing season for blueberries and raspberries? Well, okay, sure, yeah. On the, uh, on the frozen side, we are seeing uh, the organic, the, the organic blueberries coming in the market. They're taking about uh, 20, 15 to 20% of the, uh, the conventional movement away. It's, it's making it kind of hard for us to uh to move more uh conventional blueberries in the marketplace because of the 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 demand for the organic a lot of the club stores with their low margins are able to uh offer organic at a low price year round out of uh, every growing season whether it's uh, chile argentina canada oregon washington uh, california so it's uh it's, it's been a good deal for us. We've had a good 10-year run. But this year in particular, uh, we're, we're still buying a little bit. We haven't uh, taken in all the fruit that we've, that we've needed. It's just it's hard to get a, a read on what's really going on because, you know, we have the Blueberry Commission up here in Washington. We have Oregon, NABC, USHBC. But the hardest, uh, one, the hardest, uh, the hardest area to track is Canada because not a lot of people report. You don't know what a lot of people really have up here, whether it's uh, you know grade A fruit, uh, grade B. It's 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 hard to get a handle on what's really out there. So to determine what the market really is. So 
I don't know if I'm really answering your question, but uh, it uh, the blueberry market we it was it, it was a good year, relatively good year. Are you are you getting all the blueberries that you need? Um, I don't think we primarily try to buy everything that we need. We hedge, we buy out of South America because it's a, it's a world market. You know, it's we every we all trade back and forth. We compete against each other and it's, uh, you know, we're losing business. We're gaining new business. And, uh, it's the, the hardest part is to hold on to that business that you currently have. So are we getting all the blueberries that we need? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. How are things for raspberries? Raspberries on the fresh side, there's pretty much, uh, there's no more. When I started back in uh, 1999, we moved about 2 million pounds of fresh raspberries in about a period of four weeks. And with all the new varieties that have come on in California, they've taken that window away from us in the Northwest, in Oregon and Washington. So pretty much the only raspberries that are moving fresh are the stuff that's being sold on roadside stands, you know, farmers markets and things like that, which isn't enough really to, to, to affect the market. So, but, uh, Raspberries has been a good one. It's uh, for pro process. Process on the process side, yeah. In all the blends that we do, um, we don't do a lot of straight pack, but we uh, we use them in a lot of our blends. They're moving pretty well. The price has been consistently pretty good for the last what three to four years, and uh, we we hope it stays that way. All right. Did I answer everything right, or is it, did I do okay? I'll, I'll get back to you on that. All right, Diane, same basic question. You know the drill. Well, let me. I I want to say that first yeah, off. Well, do speak right into that thing because we're oh, having a little yeah, bit of trouble. It's hard to read my yeah, notes make, and. Ooh. It's been another interesting year. Um, season everywhere everywhere in the world really um but this one was a whole new a whole new set of issues um we had such a dry winter and and spring and and you know a bit of a cold front in november and then rain you know it's just awful but anyway so by the time we started picking rhubarb we knew that there was trouble in paradise because the rhubarb was short and stringy and, and the crop was like 30 to 50% down. It was awful. And then we started with strawberries and, and it was the same thing. Um, we don't grow a lot of strawberries. I mean, we just, it's very tiny, but in BC, our strawberries were like, they, they were just tiny. We couldn't get lots of times, we couldn't get labor even into the field to pick them. They were so small. And um, so that crop was really, really short. Um, and then, uh, raspberries started to come on and they were so early and they, we knew of course an early crop is always kind of a short crop and a fast crop and 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 we had blueberries right on top of them so um, the quality was really good the fruit was um, a lot of fruit went to went to IQF or as much I think as they wanted but then with the blueberries coming on I think people maybe switched out of heavy flats into drums quite, fairly quickly and I think the people who are making the you know sieved and purees got a little bit short changed with um, with their fruit um, it was it was compressed and, and we were pretty well finished by the end of July which was unheard of most everybody thought I think everybody thinks it was about 30% short um, we had some buyers that, of course, didn't want to pay the price right away. Um, they they held back. It was prices were high again this year, and and uh, and and IQF remained high, and so a lot of people maybe didn't buy as much on contract as they normally would have. And we found that people um, contracted maybe a little bit less sometimes, and some of them have been a little bit slower to draw this year, but. They're buying kind of just in time, and, and it's worked out for them. In Poland, the Polish crop of, of um, the processing raspberries, because that's what they grow, was really short. They had an awful drought themselves. 
and uh, and so they were very short in in that crop. And Serbia, Serbia's raspberries were really high quality, and and I think their crop was fine, but um, it was all IQF and it was pretty high priced. So some IQF and juice concentrate that met the requirements for the MRLs came in from Chile and Europe early on, and that's kept some customers kind of going. And right now, I think in uh, locally, I think we have maybe a little bit of IQF and a little bit of concentrate, but not very much. But we think that this year, when it came to paying the growers for the fruit, that pricing got a little out of whack on raspberries. And we think the juice and IQF pricing are way too close. Yeah. And we saw some purchases of drumstock raspberries in the $1.30 a pound range. And, and we just think that's way too high and it's really not sustainable. Um, and we're seeing, right now, we're seeing Mexican raspberries and California processed raspberries coming in. Um, and they're at, we're buying them, or they can be purchased at between 85 cents and a dollar five a pound, and that's pretty darn cheap. So um, they don't have the flavor, the flavor profile that you know of our Northwest fruit. They're not, you know, the same. But for some people, they don't care. They if if it's a round and red and it's called a raspberry, they can use it. So I, I think we have to watch our pricing and I think we have to be very aware of the rest of the world and what, they're, what they are selling and, 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 and what people are buying. It doesn't work as well bricks-wise for like a concentrator or somebody because it, what we have seen has been kind of on the low brick side. But, um, but it works kind of anybody for a single strength puree, things like that. It works just fine. So, or it works to extend their use. But, it, you know, they may, it's very easy to, tr to change your mind on what you're buying for, for 50 cents a pound. So I think we really have to be careful about our price levels. I think, I, I think it's going to remain strong, but I, I still think we need to be kind of cautious. I think the new FSMA requirements for foreign suppliers um, might help us out a little bit. Um, once it's on stream, I mean, it's still an, another year and so away before it's really all done. But, and, and certainly we have a great reputation in raspberries, like worldwide for food quality and for, for food safety. So, you know, we, we, it isn't like all bad. The entire raspberry situation, I think, is still a little murky. The processors are developing new uses and new business in other countries. Um, we've got lots of different pack styles that are moving out, and, and, and we've got some sectors that are kind of growing still. So it isn't bad news. We just need to watch our pricing. And we, we, as I said, we think prices will remain strong again next year. Blueberries, well... <laughs> I'm not a blueberry expert by a long shot. I mean, it's still a good news story. Their consumption is still increasing. Fresh Plaza had a global report on blueberries in, in November that people might want to look at if you haven't seen it already. And they indicated consumption of blueberries worldwide is, is going to continue to increase. And, and they're talking fresh market. And they say that this is because of um, Asian and European markets. And, and because of health properties. And I think it's something to, to think about. So what, this is what they said. Demand for blueberries continues to grow, mainly driven by the healthy qualities discovered and appreciated by more and more consumers. And I think we have to say very well advertised. So it, it, all these, the, the money that we're putting into blueberries and to advertising for our berry fruits and to developing a new plants it's it's worthwhile and look what it's done for blueberries so you know we have to keep it up too and we should be looking towards that for raspberries um the grocery stores are are discovering the marketing possibilities with the fresh market because they're available almost year round peru is growing almost year round um fresh blueberries um there's a so that's what they're saying, that they're really seeing in Asia um, huge growth. So we can only hope that the anticipated increased consumption keeps up with the thousands upon thousands of new acres that are coming on worldwide of blueberries. 
you know, China is, is growing, Poland, Peru, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Australia, and Mexico. Everybody is still planting and and previously planted acres are coming on, on stream. South America um, has had a cold, wet spring and that's delayed their crop up two to three weeks. Um, and there's some talk that it might be down 25, 30%, we'll, we'll see. Um, Peru's doing really well and they're, as I said, practically year round. And Mexico is having a decent crop of, of blueberries, I think. Um, here in the Pacific Northwest, with our hot, dry summer, we had a really early harvest, and the varieties were all coming in on top of each other, so it was difficult to keep up at some points. Um, some fruit was on the small side, so yields weren't as high as people had hoped, but the quality was good and prices were reasonable, and it was another really early finish. And um, there seemed to be some, there, there is some IQF inventory around, um, and, and, uh, you're right, we don't really know the quality of all of it, but there is IQF available. Um, selling prices are fairly stable, and they're a little higher than we expected pre-season. Um, we've seen the puree and juice stock items um, firm up a little bit recently with pretty limited volumes of it. So that's what I know about blueberries. And I have to say organics are huge too. I didn't know that they were taking away from the conventional market, but our organic business has increased substantially for organic, all, all organic berry fruit. Not that we can grow much of it ourselves, but, but, but I am saying that it's, it's keeping that flavor out there. Thank you, Diane. Riot, Brad, fill us in. I don't think I can say much more. That was extremely well done. So I'll just close with thank you. Oh, you will not. Here I, I think I had three things that I'd like to mention. Um, we, you know, we've had the opportunity to be up here for at least the two of us. Billy, this is his first year of many, uh, but we've been able to talk. And I think the first thing I wanted to mention quality programs. I think Diane touched on it. We, I guess you guys have heard what we've been saying and what your buyers have been saying because you have taken, I'm speaking to the grower and I think that's, that's who we really want to be uh, reaching out to here, but you guys have been hearing what we've been saying. And so thank you for that. Uh, you're taking it seriously. You're listening to your buyers and you're getting that paperwork in some faster than others, but it's extremely important. I mean, Alan touched on the recall. Um, you know, it's, that process is not fun. It's very expensive. It's costly. And it's one of those things that, you know, we need to avoid. Luckily, both raspberries and blueberries are grown above. I know there's still some st strawberry growers out there that, you know, and those can be washed. But we're, we're, even though we grow it high or wherever, it's still an issue. And the general public is much more in tune with those types of things than they used to be information gets out, it can really hurt us. So just stay, stay on those programs. Don't let your, your team uh, skip a beat. And it's going to be changing with FISMA, like Diane said. Ask your buyers what changes that looks like. It's not all going to be in one year. Some people won't have to do as much as others, depending on size from what we understand. But it's going to change things. It's going to raise the bar even further. So get ready for more paperwork. So that's the quality piece. The health benefit piece that Diane talked about is uh, also something you guys should really uh, understand. Um, you know, the blueberry success is ridden, is ridden that well. And we're proud of what's happened there. And it's, it's been extremely um, beneficial for you, for you as growers. I think what you're going to start seeing now is more of that coming out on the raspberry side. For, for those of you that were here yesterday uh, with the National Process Raspberry Board listening to Allison and Tom speak, um, it's, it's happening. There's a real focus on research, health research, and there's a couple other pieces of non-health related, more quality related research. But the marketing team is, is poised and ready to, to hit 
um, some of those research tokens, if you will, and, and work on them. We built the foundation on the marketing side. We're still working on it, but um, we're ready. And I think that's, that's important for you guys to know because it is, is more money going out. And, and I know um, how, much, how much that you know, extra penny is, um, means to you guys. So just, just be patient with us on that piece. We are working on it. We got a ways to go to catch up, but that's, that's huge because you see what it's doing. It's driving demand all over the world and uh, on Blueberry side. So we, need, we got catch up to do. Uh, the labor, labor piece, and I guess I was going to kind of inter, inter, interweave that with, we need you guys, we need you guys to come out and, and come to some of these meetings. I mean, there's, it just seems like, and what I'm speaking to are, the, you know, local, like we have a family farmers group here in the county that we're spending a lot of time on building. It's, it's a dairy berry. There's a booth here. You guys can stop if you want, but it's all types of farming together because we, we do feel Alan brought up earlier about what's going on in, in Skagit and with the Sakuma family. I mentioned that last year. I mean, I just, my heart goes out to them and what they're going through because my family's had a certain issue as well. Um, not related to labor, but we, it's, it's, we feel like, um, I think it's for anybody in business, you feel like sometimes you're under attack and, um, we have to get past that. Uh, we have to have a voice, a unified voice. And I feel like we're making progress with that. But my point is we need input from those of you in this room. And yeah, it's not fun to come to a meeting at three o'clock in the afternoon or seven o'clock at night, but we're doing it. I mean, we need you guys to come out and give us your opinion and thoughts on those on, on different topics. A lot of them are related around water right now in the county, um, quality and quantity. But it's the, the labor issues is gonna is gonna come up as well. It's it's already um, you know rearing its ugly head in Mount Vernon, and it's it's I mean it's it's that piece of the labor issue. It's also availability, and if we don't all work together, we're, we're I'm afraid it's, it's, it's going to be, make things difficult. So I encourage you guys to get a hold of, I mean, most everybody should be plugged in and know how to come to these meetings. And I, th I think it would be time well spent. So and if you have any questions about it, you can talk to me about those type, those types of meetings, or there's a booth there, but I th you're going to see that all over. Um, because uh, it, it's something that the whole Northwest, the whole West Coast, anybody in agriculture is going to deal with, especially uh, row crop production agriculture and the type of things that we're doing. That's about it. Okay, Billy, um, having heard them, do you got anything else you want to follow up? Not really closing statements, but the labor piece in, in Oregon has been really tough. We've had quite a few of our growers get slapped with the hot goods. You heard about that? Yes. With the child labor. It's, it's really hard when, you know, you have a, a, a large planting of blueberries and you're using a labor contractor to make sure that these guys aren't bringing uh, underage children out in the fields. You know, a lot of guys in Oregon that, that I personally know, they, they can't stand uh, going out into the fields during harvest because it makes them nervous. Me personally, I can't stand going into the production house because it makes me nervous. <laughs> So, you know, they got to really get out there and, and have some oversight with some of these labor contractors to make sure that you keep these kids out of the fields, you know, because it's going to be hard on everybody because that product gets held up and it's, uh, it's, it's been a nightmare for quite a few of our guys down in Oregon. So, and I know they're up here looking quite, quite often. So, All right, I think we're going to shift this to, we'd like to have some questions from the, from the audience for our panel. <laughs> So who wants, uh, who's got the first question? Who's got a question? Come on, we gotta have someone or Daryl's gonna start in. Daryl. Daryl I know. He looks very safe. I just, uh, yeah, thank you guys for going up there and doing it. Uh, I know every year it's a hassle to, to do it, but uh, you guys have done a great job moving fruit for us this year, and we appreciate everything you've done, and keep up the good work. 
Thanks, Rolf. Nice. Have you guys covered everything? Yes. Every question, potential question was covered? I can I can ask some questions. Uh, I'm no, sure you could. Okay, go. Well, anybody well, got a question? This way. If you guys don't ask, Alan is. So here we go. Are you seeing any uh, from your end users request of different varieties or request of non varieties? Are we becoming more variety dependent on blueberries in particular? On the, on the fresh Hi, side. this is just an op. Hang on, on the fresh side, yes, there it's it's becoming variety specific, and it has for the last three years. They want to buy the, you know, the Duke, the, the a lot of the new varieties, Draper, Legacy, Liberty, uh, Aurora. A lot of the retailers don't like to buy the uh, late season Elliots because of the taste. So uh, it, it has become more variety specific. On the fresh side. But, uh, Go ahead, is it Brad? Go ahead. We see a little bit on the frozen as well, on the on the purees or juices, where people want a specific uh, variety for just for a flavor profile. And you know, we should never have given them a choice. We should have just had this like blend. <laughs> but but people do. They want to taste it. They want to know. And and I think it's becoming more personal. All right, Daryl. Yeah, this is more of an observation. I kind of wish that uh, uh, labor and industry people were here today. That uh, you know, we we used to hire kids clear down to six years old, and and a lot of those kids have grown up in this community. And every one of those that was out picking berries turned out to be really good citizens. And you know, you can take a fifteen-year-old to work, but you but uh, you can't make them work. And, and so I think it's so stupid because these kids are not taking away the work that uh, uh, that uh, these adult they think the adults are going to do. Right. I agree. So I had a question for you. Guys. What's what do you think the supply is for frozen blueberries right now? My understanding is grade A, there's not much available, and there's some B available. I, well, Billy, you buy a lot of berries. Do you, do you got a lot of A or B available? Do we have a lot of A and B available? Yeah. How much we, 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 don't, we don't sell bulk. Well, do you have frozen blueberries available that are not spoke? Do you have any... Available blueberries, frozen. Every, everything that we buy, we, we we try to have it. You know, we, we buy it for for for, on, for contracts. Okay. It's already sold. We don't we don't primarily we don't try to speculate anymore. It's too risky. Okay. Yeah. Brad. You guys speculate, Brad? No. <laughs> it's it's a tough question. I it's uh, you know you look at inventory reports and I know a lot of people spend time. I I. I spend some time looking at those things, but you know, we, we like Billy does and Diane, I'm sure you buy what you need. And then, you know, it's, it's, we've talked about this before. Um, it seems like the people that do well, quality packers, that fruit gets sold quickly. It's gone. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just gone. And so I, I, it's hard to know what's left there, the volumes and the quality of it. I, not to be beg, but I'm going to because I don't have I don't have an answer, and we're not actively, you know, we we buy during certain times of the year. We try to get it all during pack time if we can. I have people that come to me easily once a month uh, looking for frozen berries, and I cannot find someone to match them up with. I, yeah. uh, right. What do you got, Daryl? Ellen. I got a question for Mr. Townsend. Uh, when you talk about uh, 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 blending, are, uh, uh, are you talking about blending like blackberries and raspberries uh, uh, together? Like, like uh, what, I, I can't remember what they call it. And you know, like about three different varieties. Yeah, triple berry blend, four berry blend, stuff okay. like that. Yeah. Thank you. Another thing, I don't know if this has a lot to do with it, but 
I don't know if a lot of you growers have noticed a lot of this private equity money coming into the Northwest, a lot of guys coming, coming in from uh, out of state and uh, investing millions of dollars in the blueberry industry here in the Pacific Northwest. What that's going to do, it's going to make, it, it should make, it's going to be hard for a lot of the smaller growers. So, you know, all I could say is that the, the quality piece of it, just do the best you can in it and try to hang in there because there's, there's a, a, a lot of money being thrown at this blueberry thing right now in Oregon and Washington state with a lot of deep pockets. And, um, you know, this, uh, agri, I, I don't even, I shouldn't even, I don't know if I should say any, I'm just going to do it. This agri-care company out of California, they got that $250 million grant and $50 million of it was Washington State Department of Agriculture money to invest. And uh, I don't understand, I'm not smart enough to understand all that, but uh, you know, it's hard to compete against guys like that and um, with unlimited uh, pockets and, and going out there and, and trying to do the right thing because they are doing the right thing. These guys are, they're, 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 they're good operators. So it's got to make all of us step up our game a little bit to do, you know, just a, a, a little bit better job, actually a much better job on the quality side. We have the, you know, the SWD that we have to fight against. Um, you know, I feel sorry for people in this room, for people back in my state in Oregon. It's, it's been a nasty thing to, you know, to, to fight, but, uh, there's a lot of things going against us in, uh, in a bad ways, but there's also a lot of good things because people are still going to eat these things. There's just going to be ups and downs and, uh, you know, save your money for a rainy day, put some under that pillow <laughs> and uh, try to make it to the next, I guess. All right. Who's got a question? We got the room till noon. Henry, you got a question? Don't make me stand here awkwardly. <laughs> All this stuff gets pretty redundant, doesn't it? Same shit every year. Excuse, sorry. <laughs> Randy, Han Coop, you got anything? You got all your products sold. No problem. All right. Good. Excellent. All right, let's give a hand to our panel. Thank you. Thank you. All right, no.